it kind of just overwhelmed my senses and my dopamine and to the point where I was just like, okay, I need to put my phone down. I need to step away from this. You know, you talked a little bit about after the show, personally, you know, you had such a high, a high, high, I'm sure after the show, when it got, went crazy. Was there ever a low after that where you kind of just came crashing down? Like, cause that's, it's hard to deal with all that fame instantly, like you guys did. Yeah, I think the, the biggest, the, the biggest low was the high, to be honest. Like as, as weird as that sounds, like the day we hit, the day I hit a million followers on Instagram was the day I hit two million followers. And to watch that happen like on your phone and see that engagement and people flooding through and all this stuff happening, it kind of just overwhelmed my senses and my dopamine and to the point where I was just like, okay, I need to put my phone down. I need to step away from this because it's like really burning me out. And it was probably the most overwhelming, crazy, stressful thing. I don't believe I've had a low at the moment. Like uh, I've kind of kept the wheels moving. I've kept everything moving forward. Um, every, everything's been going great. Uh, I'm, people now call me a TikToker, which is really good. Um, so I guess I've, I've rebanded from uh, Harris and Dr. Handle. So TikToker to now a podcaster. So I'm really happy with the direction that we're taking. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to keep the wheels moving forward. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I haven't really seen seen any loads. Like everything's just been been growing for me. So I'm very happy with that. That's awesome. What do you think a mis- misconception about influencers is? They get some negative heat sometimes. I think the biggest misconception is that um, that we're humans. Like people just completely forget that like we have feelings and stuff like that. But the biggest thing that I've noticed is every person in this industry or most people in this industry and the scene works really hard, like really hard to get to where they're at. Um, you know, you have your Addison Rays, your, your Charlie D'Amelios, like they're some of the most hardworking people that built, you know, an amazing team around them, amazing fan base, and they've just grinded and hustled. And the, the craziest thing is, is like how diversified these people are. So you have to think that it's really easy to get big on one platform, like it's cool, you can get 100,000 followers on TikTok or uh, 2 million on TikTok, but how do you put that on another platform and really diversify? And I think that's been the the most inspiring thing to see is that the people that uh, started at the same level as a lot of other people, but have put their uh, you know energy and time and effort into different platforms and creating businesses and stuff like that. Like I yeah. honestly think, yeah, especially like Logan Paul, like someone like him, like he he has really like uh, really solidified himself. You know, he's got the podcast. He's got a YouTube channel. He's now a professional boxer. He can sing. He, he's big on TikTok. Like the, the craziest thing is, is watching, because I've always like looked up to him and, and, uh, and been inspired by how he's handled situations and stuff like that. So I've seen that the only way to really get rock solid is to be big on not one platform, but as many as possible, and then just be fluid. Like you look back at like the people that he, started buying with and they're still doing like Instagram skits mm-hmm. and they're still doing the same stuff. Whereas Logan is now transitioned, he's gone in his little cocoon. Yeah. Into a butterfly. Is that a cocoon? Yeah, butterfly. Yeah. And he's, he's yeah. now a boxer and now he's, you know, just fought the, the greatest of all time. Like it's it's inspiring. I think that's uh, the, the biggest misconception is people just get it handed to them. Yeah. 